What is good, people? And thanks for tuning in for today's episode about why, what, and how I built my new e-bike. I'm going to start with what I wanted from the build. 70% road, 30% off-road. And I wanted minimal ride effort with minimal maintenance. Plus, I wanted it faster than my previous builds, more torque based. I also had a bike budget to keep within. This is still budget, but it's top end budget. First, the bike. It's a Voodoo Bizango, size large, 29 inch wheels, and it's got great reviews for my price range. Plus, it's got a slightly less aggressive top tube to accommodate a larger battery. It's also got some other features worth noting. Tapered head tube, through axle boost, wide bars, hydraulic brakes, Shimano MT200, Suntor Radon, 32mm air forks, with 120mm travel. Lockout on the derailleur, that will come in really handy, just to stop that chain slap. So it's easy to see why I made this choice. Now the kit I chose has everything needed within the box and it comes from Vandervolt. However, I also have other bits needed for the build in that pile. Tube, tyre, some spacers, stroke washers, and a control box. The battery I selected to power the bike is a 60 volt, 24.5 amp hour Samsung cells. The main box contains display unit, controller, pedal assist, control bag, two torque arms, spiral cable wrap, twist throttle, spacers, battery straps and the hydraulic brake sensors. Finally the last piece of the puzzle is a 27.5 inch 3000 watt rear hub with a 7 speed cassette and rim tape already fitted this time. Now that's the bike and kit. Let's move on to the build. First off I want to install the rear hub, so I flip the bike upside down, remove the rear wheel, then remove brake disc and install on the hub motor wheel with some lock thread. Next I was able to fit the wheel on first attempt with a spacer on only one side. as the other didn't need any. It went smoother than I could imagine, put it that way. Now on to fitting the torque arms. Work out how they fit best. and fix into position. I needed to drill a hole in the arm so I could bolt it securely to the frame. However, I did run into a slight issue that I didn't realise until I tried to fit a 14mm washer. It has a larger axle than my last two builds it's not wider, it's just deeper. So I needed to drill bigger holes in the washers stroke spacers. Then I noticed the washer wouldn't sit flat. It was catching the torque arm. So I just used the grinder to shave a bit of the washer off.
one side done then I just repeated the process on the other side Realigned the caliper. I was amazed at the space I had between the caliper and the hub. Previously, it's been like two or three mils if I was lucky. You could barely fit a piece of paper between. This was a larger hub, yet it had better caliper clearance gap. I would say about five mil. Installing the twist throttle. First I removed the old grip. Slide the throttle tube on and tighten up. Fitting the Victor V1 LCD display and unit into position. Next was installing the brake sensor cut off securely using some cable ties. Moving on to the controller. Fixed that into position with some cable ties. My original plan had to change because there wasn't much room left for the battery. I also removed the water bottle holder bolt to help accommodate the battery. As I was over halfway through the build, I decided to do some cable management. Just so it wasn't all left till the end, battery fitted and secured plus I've run the hub motor cable up the dropout posts rather than along the chain stay like I've done previously I feel this is a better option as down low it creates a risk of pedal strike you can catch it rip it off cause some damage so doing it this way eliminates that risk finally I just need to install the pedal assist onto the crank Remove the pedal, slide the crank out. Make the pedal assist magnet holder hole bigger. Remove the crank sleeve. Slide on the magnet sensor, tighten back up. Push the magnet on the crank. Reassemble the pedals back together the way they came apart. Once all the hardware was fitted, it was now time to sort the bird's nest out. All I did was use an old controller bag to conceal them and tidy the job up. This is all work in progress. If and when I can work out a better solution to house the wires, I shall do that. If anyone's got any good ideas or any suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. All that's left for me to do now is give it a test ride, but that's going to be in another video because I'm sure this one has dragged on long enough. I'm just going to take the bike outside in the light and have a better look at it. Thank you, especially as you got this far. Hope you enjoyed this upload or even learned something. If you've got any ideas or suggestions, then please let me know in the comments below. And hopefully 
We shall see you in the future. My own machines out. Go back to sleep.